Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and uh, we are going to be doing another one of those episodes that we have titled Scripture Twisting 101. Uh, we've told you in the past that uh, our focus was on biblical passages, but also we want to focus on Quranic passages as well. And as always, with me here in studio, my dear brothers David Wood and Sam Shimon. Welcome brothers. Good to be here. Yep. <clears throat> Great to serve with you guys. So, so. today we're going to talk about <clears throat> one of those Quranic passages that apparently our Muslim friends, uh, or Taoists at least, they take out of context or sometimes they come up with their own interpretation or they try to twist the meaning of what the yeah. Quranic passage is saying. The passage of today is chapter 2, verse 75, which reads, Have you any hope that they will be true to you when a party of them used to listen to the word of Allah then used to change it. So what's this all about, David? Oh, well, um, it, it, it's interesting that uh, Muslim apologists will not only twist biblical scriptures, but also twist their own revelations in order to um, get the text to, see, uh, to say what they want it to say. And uh, the basis behind twisting a, a passage like this, and there, there, there are several others, is that Muslims know that the Quran affirms the inspiration of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, the Torah and the Gospel. Correct. And uh, which is why they say our scriptures have been corrupted. They don't just say, um, well, it was never the word of God or something like that, right? If, like if someone came up to me with, with some other book, I wouldn't say your book's been corrupted. I would just say your book's not the word of God. They say corrupted because your average Muslim knows that the Quran affirms the inspiration in passages like Surah 3, verses 3 to 4, the inspiration of the Torah and the Gospel. Correct. But they have found out along the way that the Bible doesn't line up with the Quran. Uh, according to the Bible, um, the, 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 core, the core takeaway message of the Christian Gospel is a message about Jesus' sacrificial death for <clears throat> sins, His resurrection from the dead, and His divine nature. And that does not line up with Islam. And so Muslims know our scriptures have been inspired, but that they don't line up with Islam, and so they have to say our scriptures have been corrupted. Problem is, you can go throughout the entire Quran, you find all kinds of verses not only affirming the initial inspiration of right. the Jewish and Christian scriptures, but the preservation and present authority of our scriptures. And so this forces Muslims to try to come up with passages um, in the Quran which say that our scriptures have been corrupted. And so with this passage, have you any hope that they will be true to you when a party of them used to listen to the word of Allah, then used to change it. So there you have it. They've got the word of Allah, but they used to change it. So obviously, mm. obviously this is talking about people changing the Bible, <sighs> changing our scriptures. This is clear proof that the Quran is affirming not the reliability of our scriptures, but the corruption of our scriptures. Yeah, that's but it. That's really not the case, of course, when you do a close reading of yeah. the passage. So, Sam. Yeah, and just uh, may the God and Father empower us by the Spirit to glorify His Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. So, what's ironic, if you just read the passage itself, the last thing this passage is suggesting that, <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm sorry, because if you look at it, the last thing the passage is suggesting is that a particular group of Jews, because the historical context, according to the Muslim commentators, this is referring to the Jews, that a particular group of Jews corrupted the text of their scriptures. Because let me emphasize, I'm going to read a different translation, but I want you to hear what they're accused of. Are you then so eager that they should believe you, seeing there's a party of them, not all of them, that's right, party, only a group, not that's all right. of them, that heard God's word, then tampered with it. How do you corrupt a text that you hear and not read? Do you see what the verse does not say? The verse didn't say that they read the text and corrupted it. They were hearing the word and corrupting it. Now, how do you corrupt something you hear it or orally? By misinterpreting it That's right. or misapplying it or even denying that this is what the scriptures say. In fact, Tabari <clears throat> is talking exactly what you said. These so, are the interpreters of the Torah or the Jews who are like we call scribes, for instance. Emphasize for our audience who may not be familiar, who is Tabari again? He's one of the uh, you know renowned Quranic commentators. In fact, he's considered to be one of the earliest, uh, you know, uh, chiefs of uh, Quranic commentaries. So you're not just qu quoting some Joe Shmo, you're, you're quoting one of the greatest Muslim scholars and historians absolutely. of the Quran. Absolutely. Okay, so, so clearly this is not just our interpretation. Even the Muslims <clears throat> before time could see that this is referring to the verbal corruption, not the textual corruption of what they were hearing. 
And this is confirmed just by the context of chapter 2. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going to look at a couple of verses. In chapter 2, verses 40 to 41, notice what it says. Same chapter, same surah. Right. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 41. Children of Israel, remember my blessing wherewith I blessed you with, <clears throat> and fulfill my covenant, and I shall fulfill your covenant, and have awe of me. Now watch this, 241. And believe in that I have sent down, meaning the Quran, confirming that which is with you, and be not the first to disbelieve in it, and sell not my sons for a little price, and fear you me. So here the Quran says, the reason why you should believe in the Quran is because the Quran confirms what you have. The Quran says that what you have, that in your possession, is the true preserved Word of God. And this is not an isolated instance in chapter 2 here. Chapter 2, verse 89, <clears throat> I'll go through them real quickly, because there is a passage I want you to see, read to show how this can be turned against the Muslims. In chapter 2, verse 89, again notice, when there came to them a book from God, meaning the Quran, confirming what was with them, <clears throat> and they after time prayed for victory over the unbelievers. Now let me repeat the relevant part. When there came to them a book from God confirming what was with them, what they had at the time of Muhammad, this Quran confirms it. Chapter 2, verse 91. And that when they were told, believe in that God has sent down, they said, we believe in what was sent down unto us. In other words, we don't want the Quran, we believe what we have. And they disbelieve in what is beyond that, yet it is the truth confirming what is with them. Now, I won't mention the other passages, but again, chapter 2, verse 97, chapter 2, verse 101 says the same thing. So, David, let me ask you a question. Since the Quran says that one of the proofs that the Quran is from God, it confirms the scriptures that the Jews possess at the time of Muhammad. <clears throat> Are those scriptures different from what we possess today? And if not, what does that imply about the scriptures we possess today? Uh, no, we have uh, copies of the Jewish and Christian scriptures from before the time of Muhammad and after the time of Muhammad. So we know exactly what the, the Torah and the Gospel um, of Muhammad's time say. So you're basically saying, these passages are saying that what we have today is what the Jews had, and therefore what we have is the uncorrupt words of God. Yeah, and our That's scriptures true. are supposed, uh, the, the Quran's affirmation of the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures is supposedly evidence for Islam. But our Muslim friends are telling us, no, our scriptures have been corrupted. And so the, and the, one, fundamental, the argument for the Quran falls Exactly, apart. I mean, it's, it's kind of like it, it, it fires backs at, those uh, fires back at those who try to use these kind of passages because uh, what in, in essence what they're saying is that the Quran contradicts itself Precisely. that's number one number two how could the Quran issue a verse about a corruption that it's aware of but at the same time it says it's confirming the scripture Precisely. without any distinction and in the same chapter correct that's right mm -hmm. now we can turn this against the Muslims to show that the Jews corrupted the Quran and Muhammad failed to preserve it because if hearing the word and corrupting what you hear is proof of textual tampering, then the same Quran says the Jews would hear Muhammad speak and That's they right. would tamper with his words. Therefore, the Jews corrupted the Quran. In fact, if you don't mind, can you read chapter 4 of the Quran, verses 44 to 46? And Absolutely. So I'm going to use Palmer translation and it says, Do you not see those who have been given a portion of the book? They buy error and they wish that you may err from the way. But God knows best who your enemies are and God suffice as a patron, and sufficient is God as a help. And those who are Jews, and those who pervert the words from their places, and say, we hear, but we rebel, and we do thou listen without hearing, and who say, um, uh, Raina, basically, or uh, in terms of like, observe us, distort in it, with their tongues, it's very clear, you know, and taunting about religion. And it now goes understand on. Understand what know. it's saying here. It's saying they're yeah. hearing the words of Muhammad, and they are corrupting the words of Muhammad, <clears throat> twisting the words of Muhammad. Therefore, if we apply the Muslim logic to chapter two, verse seventy-five, to this passage, that a group the of Quran Jews heard corrupt. the word of God, corrupted it, meaning the text is corrupt. The Jews corrupted the Quran because they heard the words of Muhammad, misinterpreted the words of Muhammad, <clears throat> twisted the words of Muhammad. Therefore, here's your proof, the Jews not only corrupted the Bible, but corrupted the Quran. So why are they still Muslims, if they're going to apply that logic? Absolutely. And we find this, of course, all, all the time, as you know. I mean, the same thing that Muslims, or at least in this case, they'll say the Muslim apologists, the same argument they use against the Bible easily can be turned around and used against the Quran. Nice. And yet, somehow, uh, when it applies to the Bible, it has a different meaning. And when it applies to the Quran, it's 
you're taking it out of context mm. and you don't know what you're talking and the Arabic doesn't say that and the list can go on and on and on. And what's ironic, after saying all that about the Jews, notice what verse 47 of chapter 4 says. Notice how it ends that particular context. Chapter 4, verse 47. It says, O you who have been given the book, believe in what we have revealed, confirming what you had before. It's amazing. You just told me that it was corrupt. Right. So the repeated emphasis on the Quran is, though a group of Jews may have perverted the meaning of the text, they never corrupted the text, and the same Quran goes out of its way to use its confirmation of the Bible as proof of its origin, divine origin. So the Quran is saying, here's proof, this is from God. The Quran confirms your scriptures, and the scriptures they had is what we possess today, so much for the claim that the Quran testifies to the textual corruption of the Bible. Absolutely. And thank you guys, uh, of course, uh, for your insight. And uh, certainly we will continue uh, doing the same thing. Periodically we'll use Quran, sometimes we'll use the Bible. And uh, the hope uh, is that uh, people now, we, uh, you know, trying to help you uh, isolate these videos verse by verse so it's easier for you to find them. And at the same time, uh, the logic that uh, we're using here is very simple. Use, th read things in context and truly look at what the passage is saying. Oftentimes, the passage itself, even when from the Quran, is already giving you the answer, but unfortunately, not a whole lot of people pay attention to that. Thank you for joining us. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International and together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.